Hey, this is Brian. Sometimes I kind of yell when I say that hey part. It seems like I'm talking to you, right? I mean, I'm talking to you. I'm right here coming out of your speakers. But the truth is, I'm actually sitting in a padded room in my office at work at the Kalos offices with a microphone literally probably three inches from my face. And sometimes it's hard to get the enunciation just right. Sometimes it's like, hey, you know, okay, a little inside the curtain. All right, this is episode short episode number 18, and it is all about can you make ice in a vacuum? Because this is a thing that comes up a lot. A lot of technicians want to know how fast of a vacuum is too fast, how big of a pump is too big, how big of hoses are too big. And so we're going to talk about it. But before we do, I want to remind you about our great sponsors, the ones who pay the bills, keep the lights on, and make this podcast possible and hopefully as good and or as bad as it is, depending on your perspective, I guess. Big thanks to the makers of Viper Cleaners, Refrigeration Technology, Refrigetech.com. Great, great company. Also, UEI and their WRS digital wireless scales. You may think to yourself, why do I need a wireless scale? There's no point in that. Well, until you try the UEI WRS scales, initially, if you think I don't need Bluetooth, I think you're going to find you really like it. Because it's nice to not have to kind of squat down to see the readout. You can just look at it on your phone while you're doing whatever you do. And really the main thing is when you don't have a display, you don't have a display to worry about. Sometimes I have the cord, the little umbilical cord to the display, and then the display gets smashed or sits out in the sun and it kind of blacks out the screen. These things are heavy-duty mamajamas, these WRS scales. They are some pretty serious things. So I would definitely suggest that you check them out. It is absolutely my favorite scale on the marketplace today. That's the WRS scales from UEI. Also want to thank Air Oasis, makers of the Bipolar and Nano whole home air purifiers. You can find out more by going to airoasis.com forward slash go. Fill out your information there and you will get some special treatment from Air Oasis to find out pricing and where you can get them and even some special deals that you can get as a technician for your own home if you want to try out the product at your own house. So that's airoasis.com forward slash go. Also Mitsubishi Electric Cooling and Heating and Carrier for all of their support. This short episode is actually not just I, no, no. It is Jim Bergman and I talking all about whether or not you can freeze water in a vacuum. We're going to address a single question, one of the most asked questions that we get, one of the most argued about questions on social media, which is that does pulling a deep and fast vacuum with big hoses and a good quality vacuum pump, does that result in ice being built in the system? That's question one. And question two is, is that a problem? And so instead of me answering that, I've got Mr. Evacuation himself, Jim Bergman here. So have at it, Jim. No, Brian. <laughs> you have to. No, no. I mean, no, it doesn't. So. Oh, okay. The answer <laughs> is just no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it's just no. Do you want me to expand on that a little bit? Yeah, if you could, please give us a couple minutes of expansion on that. Okay. A couple interesting things. First of all, in order for water to freeze in a vacuum, we have to have water. If you have water in your air conditioning system, you got a bigger problem than that. Because how'd the water get in there in the first place? Now, I do know of a company that they had their installers hydrostatic test the uh, refrigerant lines. They meant to have them hydrostatic test the drain lines, but they ended up hydrostatic testing the refrigerant lines and they had water in their systems. And if they had pulled a vacuum on those systems, they probably could have frozen the water in the pipes, provided a couple of things that happened. Number one, it'd have to be pretty darn cold outside because when we go back and you hear about water freezing in a system, well, a lot of that comes from refrigeration, right? Because you have multiple evaporators in a case and it's already 30 degrees or below freezing in the refrigerant case and you're pulling a vacuum on the evaporator coil. And if there's moisture in there, guess what? It's going to freeze. When we're talking about air conditioning. Air conditioning, it's 75, 80 degrees outside. The odds of freezing moisture in an air conditioning system during regular service and you're pulling evacuation are almost non-existent. Again, you have to have moisture in the system. Number two is... It has to be enough moisture in the system that when it's boiling away because it's changing state, the mass that's left behind is starting to cool down and it actually gets to the freezing point. So yes, you can freeze water in a vacuum and it's completely possible. But in this case, what we're talking here is typically you throw a teaspoon of water on a 300 degree skillet, the water's just going to vaporize. Okay. It's not going to have this chance to actually absorb heat from the pipe surrounding it and actually freeze in the system. It's just not going to happen. This goes back to theoretical versus practical. Now, the other thing is, is if you're using a really good rig like True Blue and you can achieve a deep vacuum, even if we did freeze a drop of water in there, we can sublimate it off very quickly because we have a very, very deep vacuum achievable with those types of hoses. Again, I did a system just yesterday, a pretty big multi-cities product, wet system, we were able to pull that thing down. We had a finishing vacuum of 72 microns and boom, it was clean, dry, and tight. 
So we didn't freeze the moisture in the system. We did a ridiculously fast evacuation. It's just not going to happen. It just doesn't happen. So bad information has been passed around for a long time. Don't let that slow you down in your evacuations. Now, all that said, if you're using a blue vac, any of the blue vac gauges that have the graphing plotting trending on there, you valve that when you isolate your core tools and you watch what's called your decay, you'll see the line go up and it'll start to tail off, right? If it keeps going straight up, you got a leak. But if it goes up and it starts to tail off, which means it starts to curve around over time, that's your vapor pressure your water building up. So if you pull down, like I had a system the other day, I pulled down to 300 microns and I valved it off and then it went quickly up to 1,000 microns and started to tail off, 1,500 microns. Well, that's indicative of moisture in the system. Pulled it down again for another 10, 15 minutes, valved it off again. This time it curved and maybe went around 800, 600 microns. Pulled it down again, same thing happened. You get the sawtooth effect, but it keeps going down and down and down in vacuum. That's because we are removing the moisture. And so at the end of the day, we got the system dried out. We're good to go. And that moisture did not freeze in the system. So it's, again, one of those things that can it happen? Yes. Does it happen? Very, very rarely. 30 years in this business, I can tell you one time where I had to deal with a moisture problem and it was winter and they had a chiller barrel running two chillers in parallel, left one open, pulled in moisture from the air and it was so cold outside that I didn't have any heat to help vaporize that moisture and it just took forever to get the evacuation done. So can it happen? Yes. Does it happen? Not very often. All right. Summarize here. It can happen where you have very low temperatures, like where you're working on a freezer or something like that, where you have very low ambient temperatures, where it's really cold outside. In both of those cases, you're going to be battling that anyway. Like, what can you do? You can add some heat. You can use a heat gun, whatever. Turn on your defrost heaters on your evaporators, what you do. Right, exactly. So you're adding heat to the system in order to solve that problem. You're dealing with that anyway. The thermal mass of a system when the temperatures are above freezing, when it's warmer outside, makes it nearly impossible for that to occur. When you watch videos like the one on my channel that shows that you can do it in a glass jar, that's totally different because you have a very, very small volume and very small thermal mass. So it is theoretically possible. But even if it does happen, even if you have ice built up, that ice will sublimate, which means it turns directly from ice to vapor as long as it's left under a deep vacuum long enough. Yeah, it'll sublimate. It's not even about a vacuum. I mean, if you were to hang your clothes out on top of a mountaintop, eventually they're going to dry out. It could be below zero outside and your clothes will actually dry on the line below zero because the ice will eventually sublimate out of the clothing. It's just a fact. Sublimation is just a natural evaporation. It's just going from a solid to a vapor. Same thing happens when you have ice in your refrigerator. If you have ice around long enough, like in the old days before we had ice makers, we actually had ice trays. You'd sometimes pull out an old tray of ice and the ice would be rounded off and have those sharp edges are gone and it get these funky looking old ice cubes and they taste like horrible because they're sucked up all the taste from the refrigerator too. But that ice is just sublimated. It's just evaporated, right? And it wasn't the fact that it was under a vacuum. It was a fact that it's water vapor. And if water vapor travels from high vapor pressure to low vapor pressure, and if it's drier in their freezer than the ice is, it's going to sublimate away. And that's all that is. So very, very low chance of that happening. Quit worrying about it and do your job and you can sleep well at night. Pull a deep vacuum. Stop using the excuses of building up ice or that you're somehow going to damage the oil in the system. Those things aren't going to happen. Just pull a deep vacuum, isolate it, watch for decay, and then be happy. Yeah, yeah. That's the name of the game here. All right, Jim. Thanks for hosting this short episode. We'll talk to you again soon. All right, Brian. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. 